Hello, hi. So uh, this is the ball animation program. So what I have here is uh, on the right side, the browser, where it's showing in real time the code that uh, if I change here, it's going to uh, reflect the code updates. So on my left side, what I have here is take one. Uh, this is an HTML file. It's just a basic HTML file, just a very normal HTML file. So in this file, uh, what I have here is uh, under body, uh, the div uh, uh, ID with HUD, heads up display, what this is doing is it's showing the number of balls I have on the screen, which is one at this moment, and uh, the time reflects uh, the time it took to generate uh, the number of balls. So in this case, it's uh, hardly any uh, time, so it's like zero seconds. So what, is, what else do we have here in the HTML? We have body, margin, padding, and also set to hidden. So margin and padding, I'm sure you understand. It's the uh, uh, margin uh, around the page, uh, and so is the padding. And what overflow hidden does, it is uh, disables the scroll bars. Okay. So if I have uh, uh, overflow uh, uh, normal, then uh, the scroll bars might appear when the ball hits the right end of the screen or the left. So here, the edges are actually defined by my uh, window width and uh, the window height, which I'll show you in the code in a second. So next, uh, the important thing here is this uh, script SRC, which means uh, I'm sourcing the JavaScript file from this uh, take1.js, which is here. OK, so let me minimize uh, create ball and move balls. So the first thing to note here is that the main function, which uh, I'm executing the function by itself. This is the, my starting point. So I can say, okay, this is the starting point in my application. So what happens here is I've got uh, two main configurable items. So here, maximum balls to create are specified as one. So that's why there's this one lone ball floating around. And the ball size, of course, is the size of the ball in pixels. So here we have 50 pixels wide ball. Next thing, uh, uh, configurable item is a ball creation speed. So one is that it's going to, balls that are going to be created is going to be extremely fast because this ball creation speed I'm uh, using for this uh, set interval uh, function here where I am generating the ball, right? So here, how I'm generating the ball, I'll explain in a second. So let me cover uh, first the configuration configurable items. So the ball creation speed is the basically how fast I want the balls to be generated. And next we have is ball move refresh rate is that is how fast I want the frames or the movement of the balls uh, to be uh, uh, controlled. So the less uh, number I have here, the faster or the smoother the movement will be, right? And finally, I have this thing here, window on resize. What this does is uh, when I resize the window, my edges are recalculated. So if I like make it really short, so now the ball bounces on the edge here. And if I make it big again, uh, the ball, uh, let me refresh it to get a different color. Okay, very light color, one more time, okay, orange. So now what happens is uh, the ball is going to bounce on this. Uh, so whenever uh, the window size is changed, uh, this, uh, this gets activated. Basically, the page reloads itself. OK, so let me put some uh, comments here. So this, uh, OK, what this does is uh, this controls the time elapsed. So I can say uh, time. Elapsed, and uh, this gets uh, generated in the hood, heads up display. And what happens here is the ball creation. And here we have uh, ball movement. And finally here, oops. Finally here, this is uh, controlling the uh, page reload on window the size. OK, so let me quickly uh, show you the code. First, let me show you the uh, ball creation code. So what here is happening is I said max balls uh, set to 1, or I can make it 10. 
So within the limit, what will happen is, as long as the ball's length, where I'm storing all the ball objects, is uh, equals to the max ball scrape being created, when it is equal, I'm going to clear the interval. Uh, I'm going to clear the interval for the timer, this timer, and I'm going to clear the interval for the ball creation uh, uh, function, where the balls are being created. So I'm going to clear the interval for that as well. And here, uh, if that is not true, which means that I have more balls, balls to create, and I'll be creating these balls through this function here, create ball, this one. And of course, as I, uh, as I, uh, this ball is basically an object that is being returned from create ball. And as these balls are created, I'm pushing them into this array here. Then I'm uh, adding the ball, the HTML uh, code of the ball to my uh, page. And uh, I'm increasing the ball count in my heads up display here. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's look at the ball creation code. Here I have, uh, first what I'm doing is uh, uh, these balls, uh, they have different colors, right? So, okay, first let's do this. Let's do something fun. Let's create uh, two balls or three. Let's do three. Let me save. So now you can see three balls are created and each of these balls have different colors. So this color is basically what I'm doing is I'm generating, I have a list of all the HTML colors listed here in my array. And uh, what I do is uh, I select a random color. Uh, uh, select a random color uh, through, where is it? Here it is. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a math random with the colors uh, array length, and then I'm using that as the index for the color. So a random color is generated. Next, what I'm doing is I'm setting, uh, I'm calculating the uh, position X, which I'm also uh, generating as a random value. Same with position Y. And after generating these uh, two positions, I'm assigning them here uh, for the ball uh, uh, style left and style top positions. So before I'm setting that, what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a, a div element uh, dynamically instead of hard coding this in the HTML. I'm dynamically generating this. Uh, I'm giving it a class name ball so that I don't have to repeat the position absolute, z index, and border radius. So I don't have to repeat this for every ball. I'm using a class for that, a class name. So it's, uh, and then I'm setting the background color, you know, the color uh, that uh, we're generating uh, randomly. And the ball width is basically the ball size, which I'm passing, uh, which I'm configuring here and passing when I'm uh, calling the uh, create ball function here. And I'm passing along the ball size, so which I'm now reusing here in ball width and height. So it's controlling the ball width and height. Uh, left and top, I just told, uh, explained that this is basically the uh, X position and Y position of the ball. Next is uh, I'm generating also uh, uh, the sign of X. Uh, I'm, it's either positive or negative. I'm generating that also uh, by a random uh, uh, function. And also the same for the y uh, sign, whether it's going to be negative or positive. In other words, uh, this sign x, I'm ultimately going to use as a vector, whether the vector is going to be positive or negative. Okay. So if the vector is positive, the ball will move, x will increase, and the ball will move right. If the vector is negative, uh, the ball is going to move left because x is going to decrease. Uh, same logic for vector y. If vector y keeps increasing, then the ball is going to move down. And the vector y keeps decreasing, the ball is going to move up. So with the sign x, I'm initially setting the vector of the ball, whether it should be moving left or right. For example, you see here, you see this ball is moving left. And of course, this ball is moving up. <laughs> okay, wait, let's wait for a second. Okay, now this ball is moving right and this ball is moving left. So initially, when they were generated, uh, they had uh, two different directions. So that's uh, uh, based on this uh, random uh, method here. OK, so I've got the position x, position y. I've got the vectors. I've got the size. And HTML, what this is doing is the generated div. And I'm assigning here, assigning uh, to this uh, uh, key 
HTML. So one great uh, and fun thing that I learned here is that all of the ball properties, I'm creating it here in this function and I'm setting as a single object, including the HTML uh, properties of this ball. So, uh, so that was a really fun thing uh, to do, uh, which in the uh, example code, uh, the HTML was separate. But here, what I'm doing is I'm including the HTML within this ball object. Of course, I'm doing that uh, because uh, I'm going to generate all these balls randomly. Uh, so I need the code, the HTML code, to be uh, within each object, each ball object, that is. OK, so create ball is done. Let's look at move balls. So after the balls are created, uh, the, we, we trigger the move balls function. So let me do one thing here. Let me uh, turn off the ball movement and let's uh, look at the ball creation phase. Right, exactly. So what happens is the balls are created one by one. So if I do something like a ball, if I set the ball creation speed to a higher value, so they'll be generated more uh, slowly. The higher I go, the slower it will be. So now one, two, three. So if I uh, change the number of balls to be created, let's say five and save it. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, yep, five. So these uh, positions are of course random. So uh, that's how the balls are being generated. And uh, we can do a little bit of debugging as well, if you, uh, if you care. So what I can do here is, uh, as the balls are being created here, I can do a little bit of log to see what properties these balls are getting. So now here's one ball, second ball, third ball, fourth ball, fifth ball. So now, if I look at the first ball, what properties does it have? It has position x5, and it has a position y, 190. The vector is 5, vector x is 5, so this means that ball is going to move right, and vector y is 1, so it's going to move right and down. So look at this one, the second ball. It has a vector also 5, so it's going to move right, but uh, y is minus 3, so it's going to move right and up. Uh, same with this. Uh, minus 2 is going to move up, and uh, these are both 1, so pl uh, positive, so it's going to move right and down. So that's uh, uh, the different properties of the balls we have here. Okay, so next, what I, we can do is uh, let's remove the logging, and now let's uh, look at, uh, enable the movement and look at the move balls function. So what happens here is at the ball refresh rate, it's going to repeatedly call move balls. Okay, so let's look at what move balls is going to do. So uh, I'm passing uh, for move balls the balls array where all my balls are created. Uh, this is an array. It's holding all the ball objects. How many are? It's, is it holding? It's holding uh, the max balls to create. So right now it's holding five objects in this balls array. So when I call move balls and I pass it along the balls object, uh, balls array, what that will do is it'll iterate through all the balls and for each of these balls, it's going to do these instructions, carry out these instructions. And what are they? Okay, let's take a look. So if the position of the ball, x, the x position of the ball, uh, Ignore this for the moment because what this is doing is, uh, what this ball size is doing, it's actually uh, preventing the ball from moving a little bit off uh, the edge of this right and bottom areas. So ignore this for the moment. I'll explain it again later. So for the X position of the ball, if it is greater than the window width, the window to dinner width, which is this border here, if it is greater than this or if the ball's position is less than zero, then I want the ball vector to reverse. So, so if vector x, whatever vector x is, I want it to reverse, which means the ball reached a, x reached right or x reached left. So in either of this case, I just want it to reverse it. If it is 
negative, I want it to become positive. If it is positive, I want it to become negative. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll just scroll a little bit so you can see what's on the edge. It's just basically negative of what vector x is. So if vector x is negative, this will make it positive. If vector x, uh, vector x is positive, this will make it negative. So same uh, logic for the y position. If the ball position y is greater than the window height, which means it has reached the bottom, or it has reached the top. What that will do is it will simply reverse the vector y. Okay, uh, so that is done. Now I uh, set the ball position uh, plus equals to the vector x value. So if vector x is negative, this will keep decreasing. If vector x is positive, this position x will keep increasing. Same for y. And finally, after calculating these positions, uh, if I just assigning these positions is not going to move the ball, remember. We actually have to move the balls, uh, the div left and top position of the ball. So this bit of code, the ball HTML style web is going to do that. If you look at uh, the ball object, what this HTML is basically the div element and its uh, position, left and top. All right. Cool. So that makes the balls move. So now we can have a little bit of fun as I end this video. Uh, we can. We have five balls here. Let me uh, close the developer window. So we have five balls here. Now we can say, okay, let's uh, max balls to create. Let's make it 100, and let's uh, really speed up the process. So save. So now we have 100 balls created in two seconds. Okay. So now let's say, how about a thousand? So we can, uh, for fun, we can. Eat fully uh, full view of the screen and we can see that balls are being created at a pretty fast rate all being generated randomly with different colors so far so good no lag and uh, we are reaching 1000 and uh, yep 1000 balls created in 19 seconds so uh, that's the other fun part I had where I uh, generated these balls randomly and uh, it looks more fun if we uh, decrease the ball size, actually. Let's say uh, 20, yeah, and now increase the full screen. So as I was saying, the other fun that I really had was, uh, uh, it seems like as if with these random functions that uh, these balls, if you, can, if you consider them as entities, individual living organisms, it's like, you know, they're moving around as if in a Petri dish. Uh, with a life of their own, as if, uh, uh, at least that's uh, how it seemed to me. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.